flat tire. I don't know if I can pack. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a hundred bucks and you can buy a new one. It's a six hour drive. You better get on the road. You want to get there before dark. I know how long a drive it is. I'll be fine. Did you remember to send in your deposit to the power company? They're not going to turn on the electricity without it. I remembered. And what about your phone? Did you get your phone hooked up? Mom, I've been out of the house without you before. Yes, but you've never lived without me before. You don't think I can do anything on my own? That is not true. I have to go. I still have to pick up Levi. You know, it would be nice to meet him sometime. After we've settled, you can come up for a visit. Me too. I'll call you when I get there. You've done all you can. She's as ready as she's ever going to be. Ms. Thomas, this is a very difficult program. Very few candidates make it through. If Levi didn't make it on the Dean's list, that's okay. Neither did I. What I'm saying is that we have major concerns that Levi has the necessary capabilities. They used to say the same thing about me. Still do. Because of the abuse he's suffered, he's a bit schizophrenic. He, he's undisciplined, and he has a tendency to run away. We'd like to recommend that you consider another candidate. I've known since I first saw him. I want Levi. Bring in Levi, please. <gasps> oh! Oh, Levi. It's so good to see you again, too. Among his other deficiencies, you should be aware that he has a problem with loud noises. He tends to shut down. We've got a bit of a drive ahead of us. How is she in the car? All the dogs are trained not to react in the car. If someone honks at you, the last thing you need is a 60-pound golden retriever in your lap. With him, who knows? Don't honk and don't drive in traffic. Good luck. Any ideas, Levi? I forgot my maps. One bark for left, two for right. My mom always said to just keep moving forward. God will let you know if you're on the wrong track. That was prompt. You haven't met my mom. I guess I should tell you about her. I may as well start from the beginning. Let's just say I knew from an early age things weren't going to be easy. Ah! Hand over the girl! Look, a bird dumped on Sue's head. Ew, Sue has doo-doo on her head. How did that bird do that? <laughs> it's not nice of him to laugh, but it is kind of funny. Hey, all better now, okay? Boys, stop teasing. Well, you fall into the hands. I see an unidentified object flying around my little head. I thought I saw a pudding.
and that's how I went deaf. The truth is, I really don't remember being able to hear. Great day, isn't it? The wonderful beginning of a great friendship, I think. <laughs> See the seven wonders That'll be alright Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops from knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes who I am I could hear, the next I couldn't. My folks took me to so many doctors, I could have staffed my own hospital. And they all came to the same enlightened conclusion. No idea. Never seen anything like it. Give my brothers credit. At least they had a theory. It was that bird dumping on her head that did it. My folks took it real hard. I thought it was because they didn't get a lollipop. My mom became a woman obsessed. She had one objective. I don't care what it takes, she's going to lead a normal life. But I didn't. What's easy when you can hear isn't when you can't. I can teach her to read lips. And to speak? Yes, but how well is up to her. She'll do it perfectly. My mom was talking to Miss Casey. I called her the Iron Witch. Cool key. The woman was born without a heart, or so I thought at the time. Cool key. Uh, yes. Again. Uh, All that for a lousy cookie. I went to see her every day for four years. My mom was even worse than Miss Casey. She never missed a chance to make me practice. Apple pie. Apple pie. Spinach. Spinach. On the other hand, sometimes that could work in your favor. Cookie. And then, finally, the moment I'd waited so long for it. I've done everything I can for her. The next step is to enroll her in a special elementary school for the deaf. No special school. She's going to go to a regular school. I don't think that's a good idea. She's done well. She's very gifted. But I think that's asking too much. She'll make it. My name is Susan Thomas. I'm six years old. <laughs> My name is... Susan Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Kindergarten was a tougher crowd. She must be retarded. You shouldn't even be at the school. You don't belong here. You're just as good as they are. You can't let them see that they've hurt you. You have to be tough. They said I shouldn't be in the school. Because they think you can't handle it. You may have to work twice as hard, but you're going to prove them wrong. Go get ready for supper. What is it, Levi? 
Who's got your attention back there? How long has he been there? Step out of the car, please. What's she doing back there? Step out now. Oh, Levi. Get out of the car and place both hands on the roof of the vehicle. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Don't you want to tell me why you wouldn't stop, huh? Hello? Talk Officer, to me, lady. if you're talking to me, I can't hear you. I'm deaf. I have ID that verifies this. My wallet is in my purse on the front seat. What, uh... What's the matter with your dog? Ma'am? Oh, what, um, what, what's the matter with your dog? He's been abused. You beat your dog? No, not by me. I, I just got him. I apologize, ma'am. I, uh, I had no way of knowing. So how do you, uh, how do you know what I'm saying? I read lips, so I can't communicate with you unless I can see you. Right. This is the first time anyone's pulled a gun on me because of it. But not the first time it caused me a problem. Okay, class, everyone take out your... Exercise in spelling. Jimmy, how would you spell... Wrong, isn't it, class? You must remember, the most important thing when sounding out words is... And if you learn just one thing today... Your assignment for tomorrow is to give me two examples of today's lesson. Well, I, uh... I can certainly sympathize, you know. Had a cousin who uh, lost an eye. Never could see anything out of that left side. <laughs> Ended up getting hit by a bus. Anywho, this is just a, uh, a warning ticket. Huh? I want you to slow down in the future. I will. Have a good day. It's okay, Levi. Nobody's gonna hurt you. I know it's hard, but you can't ever let them see that you're scared. They'll think you don't belong. Stand up and sing the Star Spangled Banner, doesn't it? Something doesn't feel right. How are you with tools, Levi? Looks like you need a new fuel pump. I say you need a new fuel pump. Excuse me, miss! <coughs> easy, boy, easy. Come here, Levi. Dog's a little high strung. Sorry about that. Were you trying to get my attention? Yeah. He was just letting me know. He's a hearing ear dog. Like a seeing eye dog, only for deaf people. You're deaf? You don't hear anything? 
Are you reading my lips? With you, it's a little tougher because of your mustache, but yeah. Well, I'll be darned. And the dog is trained to help. He lets me know when the phone or a doorbell ring, or if somebody's trying to get my attention, stuff like that. Wow. What do they think of next? Oh, I'm Charlie Adams. I own this place. Sue Thomas, this is Levi. And it doesn't do any good to yell. I can tell you were talking louder by how your face changed. You don't say. As I was telling your dog earlier, you need a new fuel pump. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get one till tomorrow. I start a new job in the morning with the FBI. Well, I figured you were either new in town or you've been ransacking the neighborhood. My apartment's just a few blocks from here. Well, you can use my truck to take your stuff over to your place. And if you don't bring it back, I get to keep your car and come out ahead on the deal. Okay? Now it's officially our new home. We're gonna make it, Levi. Just as long as we stick together. Levi, okay, I'm up. Your technique means work. Think about this, try to keep the bird from saying after it's sort of in the sky. The greatest law enforcement agency in the world. Never in a million years did I think I'd be working for the FBI. You are in the special project program of the FBI. The Bureau receives more than 22,000 sets of fingerprints every day, and no two are alike. Now, it is your job to examine each fingerprint, identify it, classify it, and then route it for filing. Now, what you see what you see here is a central, uh, central pocket loop. Well, if it isn't one of America's finest, how was your first day? I'm in special projects. Sounds important. It's the fancy name for where they put people with disabilities. Now I know why I got the job. I think everybody wants you. They do, until they find out I'm deaf. You learn to fix engines, I'll give you a job. Thanks. Care to join me for dinner? No, thanks. You don't know what you're missing. Nobody makes a burrito like Chef Raoul. Where'd you buy your last gas? I don't know, some station just outside of town. I think the sign was green. Like the one across the street? Yeah. This is what I took out of your tank. What is that? Commonly referred to as hamburger helper. They dilute the gas with a lot of additives. 
That's why they can sell it so cheap. That should be against the law. It is. Fiber, very important to the diet. How can they stay in business if everybody's car ends up like mine? Sometimes it wrecks the engine, sometimes it doesn't. They sell gas cheaper than I can get at wholesale. I'm afraid I won't have your car till tomorrow. I have to flush out the whole fuel line. Dessert. How specially. We're famous for it here. Do you always eat like this? For the last two years, four months, 21 days. Ever since my wife died. Before that, every night I'd come home, the kitchen would be filled with the sweet aroma of home cooking. Thelma was a great cook. Just can't bring myself to do that alone. Fiftieth wedding anniversary. Got a customer. I'll be right back. Don't even think about it. You better like this. For what it costs, I should be eating it with you. Hey, have a little patience. Oh, phone call. It's good to you, bye. Hello? I'm fine. Job's great. I love it. Now, I hope that you're asserting yourself. You have to let them know that you can do anything that anybody else can do. Mom, things are going fine. Nobody's pushing me around. And how about the people that you're working with? Have you made any friends? Oh, yeah. In fact, I was just leaving to have dinner with some new friends. We look forward to meeting them when we come up. And I can't wait to see your new office. I've got to go, Mom. They're waiting. Tell Dad I'll call later. All right, I will. You have fun tonight. And be charming. And participate. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. That's not a total lie. You're a friend. And we're having dinner. Oh, don't look at me like that. What was I supposed to tell her? That I'm in special projects? I don't think so. You don't know her. She doesn't think I can survive without her. Well, we're just gonna have to show her. She wouldn't settle for special projects. And neither will I. I'll just do what she'd do. How come your food looks better than mine? <laughs> I'm Sir Thomas. Your new special project? Um, I'm Jack Hudson. I didn't work on my life for some token position. I want to transfer. And I don't want to be patronized. Good speech. Bit on the defensive side, but luckily you'll get a chance to rework it before you use it again. You looking for personnel? Yeah, they just moved to the fifth floor. We moved here from the sixth. You're an agent. Yeah. Sorry to have bothered you. Levi, why don't you stop me? You're like an idiot. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I should have moved. I used to be quicker. Oh. I think we're on a collision course. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Lucy Dotson. I work here in this office. Mr. Thomas, are you an agent too? I just met another one inside. No, I actually work for a living. I keep this office running. I'm their rotor. How about you? I work in fingerprinting. Did you know they move personnel? Yeah. They should change it on the directory. I'm really sorry. It hasn't been a great morning. 
I know the type. It's nice to meet you, Sue Thomas. Who is this? Levi. Hi, Levi. <laughs> I was just uh, on my way to get a report from my desk, and I have to deliver it just down the hall from personnel. If you want to give me a second, I'd be happy to show you the way. Actually, I'm headed back to fingerprinting. So I'll walk with you that far. I gotta hear why your doc has his own ID badge. <laughs> if you don't mind. Oh, sure, yeah. Does he take him? Uh, no. My curiosity is getting the better of me. We don't get many dogs up here. He's a hearing doc. Kind of like a seeing eye dog. I'm deaf. You what? How do you know I what? I read I... lips. I had no idea. Many people don't. That's very interesting. I'm glad you think so. You mean you can just look around the room and know what everybody's saying? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what that guy outside's saying. Uh, no, I can't. It, it's an invasion of privacy. Oh, I'm not gonna tell anybody. This is the FBI. Oh, I can't repeat that. What? What's he saying? They have something planned for this weekend that I don't think I should know about. Those two have something planned this weekend? I may not get out much, but I know an indecent proposal when I see one. friend of yours? Co-worker. Who I happen to know is happily involved. Yeah, I guess so. He's taken her to Miami. Only that's not who he's involved with. You're good. He just asked for Friday off. Said he was going out of town. Hi. Oh, nice to see you too, Levi. So, good day? Yeah. Hey, listen, you know what? If, if you don't have any plans, maybe you'd like to go and grab a bite to eat with Miles and me. And who's Miles? <laughs> Miles is uh, somebody I've been dating for quite a while now. You might call us an item. <laughs> and what do you know? Look, he's right on time. Oh, don't look so surprised. I told you I wouldn't be late. There's somebody I'd like you to meet. Sue Thomas. Sue? Miles Leland. Hello. Pleasure. Hello. You look familiar. Have we met? Yeah. Sue's gonna join us for dinner. Oh. I just remembered. I have plans already. Uh. Really, you're not intruding. We would love to have you, wouldn't we? Uh, yes. Yes, that would be just fine. And I'd like to. Maybe another time? Okay. Aw. I was looking forward to watching Levi use a fork and spoon. <laughs> I'm losing my patience, Jack. I haven't changed my mind. Maybe you should. Your business seems to be way off, Jack. Mine is booming. So I suppose the problem is. Well, even you can't make money at those prices, Renko. No, I don't know what you mean. Did I detect some kind of implication there? What? Look, I don't want trouble. You never know when you might come on hard time. You really ought to think seriously about my offer, okay?
You're thinking of selling the station? No. I came by to pay for my car. I was uh, thinking about opening up a bag of pork rinds and guacamole. To want to join me? What kind of dinner is that? It's only the appetizer. When do you close? Half hour. Be at my place in 40 minutes. And don't eat anything. Am I late? No, come on in. <laughs> Not me, love. Oh, my absolute favorite. I didn't figure I could do any worse than pork rinds and guacamole. <laughs> you really miss your wife, don't you? Well, only from when I first wake up in the morning till I turn out the lights at night. Other than that, I think I've adjusted pretty well. When we first opened the station, she would pump gas and I would fix cars. She even did the books right up until she went into the hospital. Uh, what about you? Good looking gal like you must have left some young fellow pining away back in Ohio. Not everyone's comfortable with people like me. Well. I've seen it. That's Lucy's friend. Little bad looking Sheila. Where'd Jack find her? Okay, I've asked Miss Thomas to join us today because she possesses a very unique ability. Now, for those of you who don't know, Sue is deaf. Um, this is Bobby, Miles, Demetrius. How you doing? Tara. Okay. Why don't you tell them all how you communicate? Just fine. Thank you. <laughs> I think what he's referring to is I read lips. I can sign too, if anyone's interested. You must be from Australia. I saw you use the word Sheila to describe someone. As you can see, she's very good. I can attest to it. She gave me a demonstration yesterday at lunch. That's how I know you. You were uh, sitting with him in the cafeteria. I, I was outside. <clears throat> this is Levi. He functions as my ears when I need him to. I think we can use her in surveillance. I wanted you all to see for yourselves. Maybe you already have, but uh, just in case you want to see more, we have the Wagner surveillance tape. Now, Sue's agreed to try and tell us what's on it. She's never seen it before. He said, don't you trust me? And something about nothing bigger than 20s. That's the way my boss likes it. The first guy said, tell him he can have whatever he wants. OK. Can you give us the whole conversation? Can you slow it down, blow it up? You guys are good. Yeah. No, Levi! Good, stay. No! Oh, Levi. That would have been a time for just a nudge. I really need to get a people. Yeah, they come in handy. Usually I like spontaneity. As long as I have a little advance notice. Um, I, I would have called before I came over, but I wasn't sure how that would work. 
guess it couldn't have worked out much worse than this. Would you like to come in? Can I get you something to drink? Cranberry juice, water? Uh, no, thanks. I'm afraid that's all I've got. No, no, I mean, um, I just came by to let you know that your career in fingerprinting may soon be over. I'm working to have you transferred over to surveillance uh, to work with my unit. Are you serious? If you can tell me what's on this cassette by tomorrow, I think my boss will go for it. Okay, great. Thanks. Sure you don't want anything? I have cookies. You can take one with you. Um, it's tempting, really, but uh, maybe some other time. I'm late for a meeting. I'll see you at the office. See you. Please tell me I didn't just offer him a cookie to go. Oh, come in. Stay. Uh, Sue Thomas, this is Stan Eldridge. He's the supervisor over my division. Hi, I saw you watching the other day. You were the quiet one. That's me, the quiet one. This, uh, this is the tape uh, you transcribed last night. To be honest, nothing they said made much sense. Mm. Were they talking in some kind of code? No, no, no code. You, you did an amazing job. <sighs> your, your transcript is word for word the same as ours. Congratulations. I don't understand. How did you get a transcript of what was on that surveillance video? We made the tape up as a test. The suspects were our own agents. We had to see firsthand just how accurate you really were. You thought I might be making things up? No, no, of course not. We, we just had to be sure. But not to worry. You passed with fine colors. I can't believe you did that. Why didn't you just tell me I was being tested? I couldn't. Why? Eldridge and the U.S. Attorney's Office felt they needed to be reassured of your accuracy. We want you to testify in court on the Romano case. You want me to what? Today, this afternoon. Would they allow my testimony? Well, that depends on how convincing you are. Frankly, we're scrambling on this one. Some of the evidence that we were counting on has been tainted. Without it, we don't stand much of a chance. You might change that. Well, at least there's no pressure. For the record, can you please state your occupation? I work for the FBI. I've been watching videotapes and translating what is being said. And these tapes need to be translated because there is no audio. Is that correct? Yes. What ability do you possess that qualifies you for this work? I read lips. And what makes you such an expert lip reader? I've been doing it all my life. I'm deaf. Thank you. Miss Thomas, what am I saying right now? I think I could talk and talk and talk all day long, and you wouldn't get a word of it, would you? You purposely kept from moving your lips so I wouldn't be able to see. In day-to-day -day life, people don't do that. Well, isn't it true? You don't communicate as well as you'd have us believe, Miss Thomas? Your Honor, I object. I'm merely attempting to prove to the court this woman is not a reliable witness, Your Honor. Counselors, please approach the bench. <clears throat> I'm not going to have this turned into a sideshow. Whatever she says shouldn't be admissible. It's an invasion of my client's right to privacy. Well, I'm sorry, Counselor, but the law is really clear on this point. If your client was in his own apartment with the blinds closed, you'd have an argument. But not if he's having a conversation in the middle of a public place. How do we know? She's not just making it up. I've just proven her testimony is simply not reliable. I object. Your Honor! I... What he just said is not true. My testimony is every bit as reliable as any other witness. And I would never just make things up. Your Honor, she's out of line. The last time I looked, this was still my courtroom. I'll make that decision. By the way, I have some Pepto-Bismol in my purse if you're still having gas pains. I get that way sometimes after Italian food, too. I saw you telling the bailiff you needed an antacid because of your spicy lunch. <clears throat> I see nothing wrong with this woman's testimony. We'll continue. 
You were spectacular. I just told him what I saw. And what you saw is what they said. They want a plea bargain. They know we've got them. Oh, look out, bad guys. There's a new sheriff in town. And I just heard from Eldridge. You're officially assigned to our task force. If you want. I don't believe it. <laughs> I mean, it, that's great. I think so too. Way to go, girl. Welcome to the real FBI. How do you like that, Levi? <laughs>